The Flight Crew Support Division, MSC, has three Apollo simulators at the Kennedy Space Center and seven at the Manned Spacecraft Center. Where Gemini required one basic mission simulator, Apollo needs two separate pieces of hardware to simulate a complete mission, the Lunar Module Simulator and the Command Module Simulator. This follows from the two spacecraft phases of the mission. The Command Module Simulator realistically duplicates flight hardware. The crew area contains active controls, switches, and instruments. It also presents visual displays through the spacecraft window of the lunar module, Earth scenes, lunar scenes, star fields, and so forth. Looking at the simulator from the outside, the displays bulk very large, and sometimes the astronauts call them the boxcars. A digital computer complex programs the simulation. An instructor directs crew training at a console, which duplicates the instruments and displays of the command module simulator. The instructor can insert given mission phases from his station and repeat that phase immediately for review training should he or the crew feel this would be desirable. The lunar module simulator, which fills in mission phases unavailable in the command module simulator, follows a like pattern. There is the simulator itself and displays such as star scenes and lunar surface scenes. It is also furnished with an instructor's console, computer, and equipment racks. To the left of the simulator is a three-dimensional mosaic of the moon surface. Through closed-circuit television, it presents typical lunar landing displays marked by craters, mounds, and boulders. The mosaic gives the astronaut a realistic feel for his final landing approach. Lunar module motion is simulated by moving the map up and down for vertical motion. A camera on a dolly track provides lateral movement. Lights around the camera lens simulate lunar lighting conditions. With these two simulators, a crew can practice the basic flight elements of the Apollo mission from launch complex to landing on the moon and return to Earth. For more detailed training of critical phases, the astronaut turns to specialized simulators. Let us look at some of them. Wherever possible, these have been modified from existing Gemini hardware. The dynamic crew procedure simulator, which stresses launch and launch abort training, was converted from Gemini. It provides a physical environment such as motion, sound, and the onset of gravity so that the crew can evaluate launch vehicle performance. Six, five, four, three, two, ignition. Liftoff. Apollo 7, be advised you have pressurization problems in the J-2. Stand by for possible abort situation. Roger, standing by. Roger, pressure still decreasing. Apollo 7, decision is to have you abort at staging. So I will give you a countdown. Three, two, one, abort. With such training, Captain Shira was able to react immediately to the shutdown of Gemini 6 on the launch pad. This is the old target and docking simulator as you Gemini cruise. Range, if you're ready, I'll reset. It has undergone right. a facelifting, okay. substituting the Apollo command module and lunar module stations okay. for the Gemini okay. and the Agena target vehicle. At this point, you should slow your closing velocity to approximately one-tenth to three-tenths of a foot per second. Okay, uh, is this the recommended velocity? Uh, that's correct. Okay, have any patience, small latches. The probe should be retracting. Okay, it seems to be. Okay, that's it. And then you can back it on out again. Okay. I'm releasing. All right. If you're in conditions, you had a... 90 degree pitch down, a degree yaw right, zero roll. You're offset a little to the left laterally. That's probably why you had the yaw right in there. Your 
lined up vertically. Contact velocity is one tenth of a foot per second. EVA training centers around two complementary simulators, the water immersion facility and POGO, a partial gravity simulator. The value of underwater training as realistic simulation of weightlessness for study of space tasks was borne out by Buzz Aldrin during Gemini 12 EVA. This experience is being applied to the lunar mission and to the space workshop. But the astronaut on the moon will work under one-sixth Earth gravity, setting up scientific experiments and gathering geologic samples. Pogo simulates both zero-g and one-sixth gravity conditions. For lunar work simulations, a pneumatic tube counterbalances five-sixths of the astronaut's weight. Gemini crews had the use of two mission simulators, one at Kennedy Space Center, one at MSC. These have been combined into a single Apollo Procedures Development Simulator. It has two crew stations, one command module, one lunar module. In them, the astronaut can practice specific flight elements of the mission, such as thrust maneuvers, star sighting, and so forth. However, the sheer number and complexity of Apollo simulators and related equipment has strained existing facilities. Ground was broken in February on a new flight crew support building to be completed in 12 months. It will house the procedures development simulator with a new computer complex to increase the training. But this is looking a little to the future. For the present, all simulators needed to support the first manned Apollo mission are man-rated and operational. The slow details, the hundreds of hours of simulator training have begun.